Hey guys, Alex here with Armadillo Armament. Today, we are going to be discussing shooting with 22 conversion bolts and 22 pistols and why I may or may not think it is a useful uh, training tool. Now, before we jump into this video, like and subscribe to this channel. It really helps me out a lot. Um, I'm so grateful for every one of my subscribers and thank you very much for uh, the excellent comments that you leave on my videos. Now, if you do want to support me directly, uh, I have teamed up with Red Pawn Shop. He makes armadillo patches wearing quad nods. He's a really cool distributor. Every time you purchase a item, not just an order, he's going to scoop uh, one pound of junk out of the ocean and plant a tree. So not only are you buying really cool patches for me, but you're also saving the planet. Use code armadillo for 5% off, and I'll add a link in the description down below. I get a small kickback, and you, of course, get a discount. So let's jump into the video. 22 pistols and 22 conversions. So... Whew. Training is expensive, guys. Post-COVID, uh, training prices have gone down a little bit. During COVID, of course, we all know that 9mm went up to 50 cents a round. It's insane. 5.56, five, even more so. Now, I want to discuss where I think that 22 pistols and these 22 conversions really fall into our, our training regiment. Uh, if I think they are a useful training aid or not. The reason I bring this up is I see a lot of videos that say, uh, buy a 22 bolt and put some 22 ammo down range and use that for your training and then use normal ammo for, you want to use normal ammo every once in a while, but use your normal ammo when you have to. And uh, I'm going to spoil the video right now, but I really don't uh, think that's a useful training exercise. Now, this video is really aimed towards people that are just getting into guns and don't have 10 different guns like me. Um, if you are a gun nut uh, like myself, you're going to have a lot of guns anyway. And I'm not saying don't buy a 22. I really recommend you buy a 22, and I'll get into that. But if you are just getting into guns, and let's say you only have a Glock 19, and you want to train for cheap, this video is really for you, okay? I'm not targeting the gun guys like myself. I'm really targeting a new buyer. So please comment down below once again if you have any questions about this, and I'll be happy to um, intervene. So, uh, 22 LR, what is it? Uh, 22 LR is a tiny little round. You can pick these up for under 10 cents a round, uh, probably around 5 cents a round, realistically, 5 to 7. And um, 22 is a really interesting round. Now, 22 is rim fire. What that means is the back of the round is rimmed. Uh, think of 762 by 54 r That's a rimmed cartridge. This is a rimmed cartridge. Um, you're not going to be able to reload 22 LR. Uh, I think technically you can, but you don't want to. You just want to buy 22 LR. And the entire appeal for it is getting ammo for cheap. There is no other appeal. Um, I don't care what anyone says. Some people say it's good for like varmints. You know what? I'd rather just suppress like 9mm at that point, right? So I don't think 22 has any other purpose other than being a cheap plinking round. So now if you are a new gun owner, you probably have a, I'm going to assume you have a Glock 19 or a SIG P320 or some 9mm handgun. You're looking at 22 LR because it is enticing seeing that it is seven cents around and you see people on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube saying that 22 LR is good for training. Hence the Glock 44. The Glock 44 is a Glock 19 analogous firearm, right? 44. It doesn't say 19 there. This is designed as a training tool and nothing else. Um, this is not a self-defense tool. I don't care if you're bad at handling recoil. Don't use a 22 LR for self-defense. Um, so, like I said, you're looking at these guns. SIG has 22 LR guns and you're saying, should I get that for training? And I'm here to tell you that if you are new into guns and your funds are limited, I personally do not feel you should purchase a Glock 44 for training. The rifle is a little bit more complicated, and we'll get into that. But you have a Glock 19, it's stock. What are some of the first things you're going to do to a Glock 19? Well, first of all, you're going to buy a holster. That goes without saying. But after that, I recommend a weapon light. Now, the Glock 44 does allow a weapon light. Same with like a SIG 22 conversion type system for like analogous like P226, right? 
That is a massive pro. This can go in your pants, this can go in your holster, and you can do draws from concealment, shot, shot on target. Now, the problem with this uh, comes into red dots. This is more of a Glock problem, but this slide on this Glock 44 is uh, made out of polymer. Um, because of that, you can't mount a red dot to it. Uh, there actually are some slides that are extremely lightweight that do allow red dots on the Glock 44 platform, but those are really expensive and I've seen a lot of issues with them. Maybe I'll pick one up in the future, but that's the first problem is you can't mount a red dot to this. Uh, you're going to have failures. Um, and if you are living in the 21st century, most people run red dots. I'm not saying if you're not running a red dot, you're wrong. But if you're not running a red dot, you should try to get with the times unless you have something that says your eyes physically can't use a red dot. I promise you, um, red dots are the future. Red dots are the now, really. They're not the future. Um, so that's the first problem with training with 22 is getting a red dot on the pistol can be very difficult. I've done my research and there are plenty of other 22 LR pistols that also have the exact same issue with putting a red dot on. Now, there are some pistols like the TX-22, if I'm remembering correctly, which have like a top frame mounted red dot, but that's not even comparable to like a handgun, is it? Um, and the training I think you can get from a 22 is going to be, which I'll get into, bring from concealment, presentation, and then probably first shot on target. Every shot after that isn't a really good comparison to a 9mm handgun. And that's where a lot of the conversation is going to be today on the pistol is, like I mentioned, I do not find that I get really any good training from a draw presentation for a shot on target, especially without the red dot. Um, shooting with a red dot requires a lot of training. That's without a doubt the biggest flaw of the dot is just that people see it and they say, ah, I want to go back to irons. It's so much like I'm more accurate with irons anyway. And really that's kind of like laziness more than anything. And I don't mean that in a rude way. If you are into iron sights, I just mean that, you know, red dots and this new concept requires a lot more additional training. If you put in the work, you will get there. I promise you, it took me a little bit to get used to them. But because I don't have a red dot on this pistol, immediately I'm getting 75% less training than I would be with a actual Glock like this Roland Special build. So that's the first problem is a red dot, I would say, is most of the training and this not being able to have a red dot is a massive flaw. Now, the second part of uh, the, the flaws that I have with trying to train with a 22 pistol is, of course, going to be recoil. And where I think um, a Glock 19 is, is going to be superior, I'll give a recommendation in a moment. It goes without saying that a 22 has no recoil. And I'll post some videos throughout this, this video right now, but a 22 has almost no recoil. Uh, it's kind of fun. Um, and that's where 22 can be extremely viable as a fun weapon. But when you are, and this is clear, when I, I am trying to do strings of fire like a bill drill, um, the gun just doesn't move at all. It may kind of bounce a little bit, um, but it's extremely easy to keep on target, right? Versus a Glock. Uh, the hardest part about managing a, a fast cadence of fire in something like a build drill is without a doubt going to be the recoil. Hence why we put compensators and whatnot on our firearms, right? So that is, once again, another issue with the 22 LR. Um, 22 LR doesn't accurately represent recoil. I have an airsoft gun in my closet. Uh, it's a gas blowback um, rifle, not an electric rifle, and that simulates recoil better than 22 does, unironically. Um, 22 is just really bad at simulating recoil because, once again, it is such a tiny round. So, to really sum up my opinions on pistols, if you are new to the channel, just quick summation, um, or if, if you are a new gun owner, I would more recommend that you spend your money on ammunition rather than a brick of 22, which is cheap, but can add up over time, a Glock 44, a weapon light for your Glock 44, because remember, you want to have like a similar setup to what you're carrying, very likely. You don't have to, but I'd recommend that. Um, and then buying like magazines, right? This is going to be a $500 package. Even though the Glock 44 is a $300, $400 gun, this is going to come out to like $500, right? So 
I would much more recommend you just buy ammo. 9mm ammo is looking at about 25 cents a round, 20 to 25 cents a round, and being able to just feed your Glock, what would that be? Uh, $500 times four, so 2,000 rounds of ammunition is a much better training aid, in my opinion, than a 22 gun. Once again, this really applies to you if you are a new gun owner. If you are a gun enthusiast like me and you want a 22 because 22s are fun, that's a completely different discussion, which we'll get into towards the end. But the other thing you're going to want to do instead of using a 22 is you're going to want to dry fire, right? You hear it all the time. Get your dry fire reps in. Um, dry firing is, in my opinion, uh, about... 70% of training, right? Between It's a high number percentage. So what you're going to want to do is in your room, find a light switch or I have a whiteboard over there. I have a painting right there. Check clear on your firearm. Make sure you don't have ammo next to you when you are dry firing. And you want to present, pull the trigger very smoothly. And then obviously your trigger is not going to reset, but you're going to want to kind of bring your trigger forward as if you are firing a real firearm. Um, just do this over and over, guys. If you work from home, like I do, uh, you're going to, like, while you're working, just pick your gun up every once in a while, pull the trigger, bam, reset, pull the trigger, bam. And that right there is going to be 70% of your training. So when you go to the range, the only thing you have to train is going to be recoil. When you go to the range, if you do your dry fire, and you do from draw presentation and then break the shot, you're already training trigger, you're training draw, you're training speed, and um, yeah, you're, you're training really most of the handgun fundamentals. Um, the only things you're really testing at the range is you're, of course, testing the recoil because 9mm recoil is going to bring the firearm up. So you want to test your ability to bring that recoil back down. Um, and then second of all, you're, of course, testing your marksmanship. But if you're dry firing correctly and you have a dot, um, you can be you can be responsible for your own, like where you think you're hitting. I'm aiming at a two on that whiteboard. I didn't drop it all in my personal opinion, and I can test that at the range. But I know that I'm accountable for myself and I know I just pulled a really good shot. And I did that without having to spend any money whatsoever. So I really recommend dry firing over a 22 pistol. And then when you go to the range, burn down that 500 rounds of ammo and really test the recoil and really test the marksmanship. All right. Now, the conversation gets a little bit different when it comes to rifles. Not too much different, but over here. You guys know that my main rifle is a SIG MCX, right? Over here, I have my first AR-15. This is a uh, Springfield Armory Saint. Um, not a Gucci build by any means, about a $1,000 rifle. I uh, got some stuff on it, a bipod. Funny enough, I have a little like carry handle because it's going to be an LMG build eventually. But the reason why I bring this up is uh, my MCX is uh, 11 point, or it's an 11.5 inch rifle. It's roughly 11 pounds. It's really, really fucking heavy. Um, so immediately, this is already not a great analogy to that MCX, right? This is a pretty lightweight build. This is clocking in at about seven to eight pounds. Um, second of all, this is a 16-inch rifle, and obviously the setup is very different than my MCX, which has a EOTech and a magnifier. It has a laser aiming module at the front, um, and I don't have the ability to really buy another MCX and... Um, buy all the accoutrements that would bring it to to what my rifle in the other room is right so first of all we already have some problems there um rifle manipulation is a lot of rifle training um rifles are incredibly easy to shoot guys uh if you go to the range and you shoot 500 rounds of rifle with a proper trainer uh in my opinion you are probably by the end of that course you're really proficient with rifle because rifle is so easy you put the dot on the target you're shooting full power 556 five, you put the dot on the target you pull the trigger rifle triggers are normally really good too um and uh uh you know the bullets go where you want there's not that much recoil right it's not like a pistol where pistols require some finesse to really get good at rifles are really easy so first of all that's the first problem training rifle um i might get some hate for this but i don't train rifle nearly as much as i train pistol 
because once again, first of all, it's just so freaking easy. I can give this to my friends and give them proper training, and in 200 rounds, they're pretty damn good at using a rifle outside of like 1R1s and whatnot, which are a little bit more difficult. They can crush bill drills with point whatever splits. Um, the second thing about training with rifle is rifle is more expensive, and I personally think a pistol is a lot more important for a civilian. Um, if we ever get into a self-defense situation, let's be realistic, guys. We're going to be using our handgun uh, if we're out and about, let's say in a Walmart and there's an active shooter. We're going to be using a pistol. We're not going to have our rifle on us. The only time we're really going to use our rifle is if Civil War 2.0 comes along, which is probably not going to happen. Everyone fantasizes about it, but it's probably not going to happen. Or second of all, if someone breaks into your house, which even then, I've heard a lot of arguments for people saying, just use your pistol. Um, but back to training with 22 LR, when I said that training rifle isn't as important, uh, you know, it's, it's because I meant it. Uh, I don't find that I need to train rifle nearly as much as I have to train pistol. And because of that, I don't really need a 22 system that I can bring my rifle on target, pull the shot, bring it down or go into high ready, low ready, whatever. Um, I find that with rifle, I can just stick around uh, a MAGA 556 steel case if I want to. The hardest part of rifle is probably going to be getting a proper cheek quote and a proper presentation on the draw, quote unquote. So in, pull the shot, and then do a 1R1, right? Mag from my pocket, in the rifle, back to pulling the shot. And that's really... Uh, I'm going to have a video someday on training and what drills I recommend, but that's probably one of the best drills you can do is just maximizing your training by having to do so many things and timing it with a proper like shot timer. So back to the 22 LR argument, where does 22 LR fit in there? Well, shooting 22 LR is going to be slightly cheaper instead of shooting 30 cents per round to 50 cents per round, depending I'm shooting seven cents a round. Um, and recoil isn't nearly as important with a 5.56 rifle because, once again, 5.56 barely recoils. My 100-pound girlfriend can control 5.56 recoil. So what is the point of 22? And really the answer is I don't think there is one. That's, that's really kind of uh, the entire point of the video is I really don't think there is one. For a training aid, especially on rifle, in pistol... If someone gives you a free Glock 44, I can see using that to uh, bring from holster, present on target, and take a shot, and it'd be really, really cheap. You're not getting the red dot training, which is 75% of the training, but for a rifle, God, I, I'm going to be honest, guys, I really don't see any purpose in training with 22 on rifle. Now... I don't want this video to be completely negative, and I'm going to have a video at some point talking about the praises of 22, because once again, this video really is 100% positioned for a new gun owner that wants to get in proper training, and obviously I just shit on 22 for 10 minutes, but I want to end this video on a positive note. 22 is fun as hell, guys. If you uh, TLDR, I don't recommend 22 for training, really in any capacity, but... 22 is just a fun freaking cartridge. Um, it's kind of annoying the amount of jams I get. Uh, I found that Norma sometimes works, and I don't have a single jam in 200 rounds. And then sometimes, I think it was cold the other day when I went, and I'm going to go this weekend, uh, I couldn't get through two rounds without having a malfunction. So that's really annoying. I guess you can improve your malfunction drills. I guess I wouldn't, I, would, I don't want to uh, get better at my malfunction drills because my nine millimeter Glock never malfunctions. So what am I even training? But um, at the end of the day, 22 is just really fun. Okay. If you like to bring your rifle, your 22 rifle on target, and assuming you don't jam, go do, 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 do. It's kind of cool, right? Like you're you're shooting a little laser beam. It's like you're playing laser tag. The gun doesn't move at all because you're shooting some tiny freaking round out of a massive 16-inch barrel. Look at how small that round is, guys. So the gun doesn't move at all, and it can be really fun. That's the first reason to pick up 22. The second reason to pick up 22 is um, not for training, but it is significantly cheaper, obviously, than the other rounds that you're essentially replacing it with, and that's really beneficial when you're going to the range with friends. 
we all have a uh, girlfriend or a friend that comes to the range with us and kind of mooches off us. They, they've they never given you a, a, a crisp $20 bill for all the ammo or $100 bill for all the ammo they spent, have they, right? So uh, handing them this uh, 22 LR rifle, I don't feel bad about giving them this and say, hey, take the next three mags of 22 because it'll cost me $4, right? Whereas I hand them this uh, Glock 19 with my rolling build with a 17 round mag. Let's do some quick math here. 25 cents around, 25 times 10. It's going to be a little bit under five bucks, right? So I'm not, I wasn't good in high school. Three to five bucks, right? You give them this mag, three to five bucks down the drain immediately. So uh, that's probably the only other reason I'd recommend 22 is it's just... Uh, it's a good time, and it's really cheap to hand to your friends and go plink. Or if you're going to the range to not train, because I train all the time, guys. I'm really good with my handguns. I'm really good with my rifles. Every once in a while, I just want to go to the range and plink and just have fun. Life doesn't just need to be about training 100% of the time. I'm going to be the next Lucas from T-Rex Arms. Uh, credit to him. He's great. Grantham, whatever. Um, but life, life doesn't need to be about that. Sometimes you just want to go to the range and burn some 22 and have a good time. Um, so that's also where 22 comes, comes into play. It can just be a fun thing and not everything needs to be super fucking serious. Sometimes we just want to have a good time. So that's where 22 comes into play, guys. Uh, TLDR, don't buy 22 for training. Just buy it because you want it. All right. Um, it's a great round. Uh, I think if you're a gun enthusiast, every person should have a 22 just because it can be so fun to use, especially like a suppressed 22 that actually works, unlike the Glock 44 that jams all the time. I'll have a review on this eventually, but don't take it too seriously and don't replace your 9mm or your 5.56 training with 22. All right, so those are my thoughts on the 22 LR. 22LR has a really, really big following. Uh, there are people that shoot 22 competitively. There are people that only shoot 22 because they think it's like a, 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 going to bounce around and kill the person, right? Um, you know, if you like 22, I really hope you don't take away from this video that uh, I'm shitting on 22, okay? I really hope you don't take that away. I, I just hope that you see this video and you say, you know what, maybe 22 isn't the best uh, training substitute or training training tool. Instead, I should be actually using the real deal stuff. Um, save 22 for fun, okay? Save 22 for just having a good time and vibing. Um, or if you're killing little rats, I guess you can use 22. I probably wouldn't, but I know a lot of people do. So, uh Thanks for tuning into the channel. Really informal video on my thoughts on 22. I like uh, just rambling. I guess that's why the channel exists. Like this video if you like it. Comment down below. Um, this is a really, probably a controversial video. I'm actually expecting to get some flack for this. Comment down below if you disagree. Because if you convince me that your opinion is correct, uh, hey, I may make an update to this video. Um, and subscribe to this channel so we can uh, beat the YouTube algorithm. And I don't know get uh get enough subscribers one day that i can live off this channel that's not gonna happen but regardless buy cool patches train well enjoy life and i'll catch you guys in the next one